doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We are um, getting ready to get started with our last session of the morning. Uh, my name is Audrey Harmon, and I'm going to let Melody and Emily introduce themselves, and then we're going to turn it over to our presenters for the day. Hello, everyone. I'm Melody Offiel. I don't think I've said that any of the other other sessions. And what I'll be doing today is kind of going with the Q and A, looking over that. Um, that's where we would like everyone to put their questions for our presenters. So if you do have any questions during the presentation, if you'll put them in the Q and A, I can ask our presenters or answer that back. Um, at that time so that way it's kind of an easy way sometimes things get lost in the chat box but we'll try to keep an eye on both thank you hope you enjoy all right and i'm audrey Harmon, and we are so glad that you're here we have astrid smith and sheree orell with us and um, sheree teaches second grade at anadarko and um, she was a 2020 finalist for oklahoma ag in the classroom this year and then Astrid Smith is also a teacher. And Astrid, I missed what grade you teach. Second grade as well. Second grade, okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you both for joining us. And you are able to share your screen or I can do it. So whichever you prefer today, I know we, we practiced both yesterday. We're gonna try from our okay. pandemic here. Okay, well, I'm set up if I need to. So um, we're gonna turn it over to you and thank you all for joining us. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, give us just a moment. All right, now we're ready. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. All right, we are um, both teachers. We work together at East Grade in Anadarko, Oklahoma, and just wanted to take this time to share with you the wealth of information that Ag in the Classroom provides on this particular topic. And a lot of you I know have ventured out onto their website and know of the wonderful resources that, and lessons that are available. So I'm just, we're just gonna take a little bit of time this morning to show a corn unit that we teach in our, in our building. As you notice in the background, it is a corn field. Um, this ha actually is a corn field in Caddo County, just west of Fort Cobb. So I wanted to get something local and it just worked out perfect one day. I was driving down the road and saw this beautiful crop of corn. So I thought I'd add that to our slide presentation today. I've chosen this outline just to show you how to break down the different lessons. This is by no means a way that you have to teach them. And as we all know, as teachers, we pick and choose how we want to use the information. So I'm just gonna show you a plethora of resources and lessons today for you to dive into their website, which I encourage you to, if you're not as familiar with Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom site, it'll be a lot of fun and exciting just to see all that is provided to enhance your teaching instructions. So um, the reason that I have broken it down into this outline is that's what got started years ago in doing this corn unit. Um, our district provides a grant and we wanted to be able to go to the corn maze to take our kids to that. And so um, it's STEAM based or STEM based grant. And so I just went through and started pulling out the resources and plugging them in to fit the acronym of STEAM. So this is where the outline developed. Typically in our building, we choose to do this unit during the month of, of um, October because that is National Popcorn Month. And also corn mazes are in operation in the fall as well. So to begin with, I uh, just wanted to present a little trivia. There's tons of information. So I just kind of picked and choose some of the things that I wanted to highlight. Being that corn is a grass plant native to the Americas. It's one of the world's largest crops with the US being the main corn producer and of the whole world. 
corn is grown in Oklahoma, mainly in the northern, eastern, and panhandle parts of the state. But as you notice, it can be grown all over the state, just as I showed you the crop in Caddo County. And most of the, the corn is a dipped corn, which is used for grain or silage for livestock. Also, I like to incorporate the native tribes, mainly because Oklahoma is rich in our history of native tribes, plus the school district that Ostrid and I both teach in has a high number of Native Americans. And so I uh, like to bring in the resource from the website on Cherokee farming. We have a lot of tribes represented in our school district. However, the Cherokee is not one of the predominant tribes. So I just take a little bit of time just to introduce the Cherokee tribe and how farming of corn was useful to their heritage and how they helped pioneers as well. So that's why I brought that resource in at this particular time. There's a lot more information available that you can pull from that, but I just kind of keep it basic. I also like to share with my kids that corn is used for stuffing in mattresses long years ago, how corn cobs were used for fuel for burning to provide heat. Toys were made using all parts of the corn, how it's used in manufacturing, um, how ethanol is made from corn as a renewable fuel for automobiles. And a fun fact about corn is, the, is that um, it takes about 25 gallons of water just to grow one ear of corn. That's just one ear, that's not the whole stock. So it's important that um, it does get lots of water. Also, something to think about, this was a fairly new fact that I learned recently. Well, next time you're gnawing on a corn cob, before you start eating, count the rows of corn because every corn cob has an even number of rows. Now, not every, row, uh, not every cob will have the same number. One might have 24 rows and one might only have 18, but I've tested that time and time again, and I just think that's a very interesting fact that I wanted to share and pass along with you guys. So this is an activity right here to kind of introduce corn products with your students. And uh, my link is not linking up very well, so I'm gonna show you a picture of some products, okay? Hopefully, I'll kind of just hold it around batteries, candy bars, tortillas, matches, diapers. Then there is another product, uh, not another product, but you have a resource that's on the site called Corn, Corn Free Products List. And what that is, it lists all of the products that you've just seen. And if we were in person today, I would be having you circle all of the items on this list that you feel like have corn in them. And after you've had a chance to look at the list again, I'm gonna ask Oscar to share with you out of all of those products, there is only one of those products that does not have corn as a byproduct. Oscar? And that would be pasta because it contains wheat flour, not corn flour. So the kids would probably get a kick out of that, like a diaper, a diaper's made out of corn, really? So that's kind of a cool site that I like to show the kids to start off my corn unit. The third um, on your screen there where it says corn, a golden treasure, that is also a handout. And it has literally hundreds of products. It's a two-sided handout that has all of this information. And just at the top, it starts, and I'll just kind of share this information real quickly. It says a bushel of dent corn, and that's the corn raised for livestock, for feeding of the livestock. So a bushel of dent corn weighs about 56 pounds. So this would be a great opportunity to bring in some math, um, actually show them a bushel basket, the size of it and so forth for comparisons. And inside that bushel basket, it would approximately hold 90,000 kernels of corn. Then they can, you can take all of that and break it down a little bit more because a lot of them are familiar with sweetener used in teas and other beverages. 
um, it takes 33 pounds out of that bushel, it, 33 pounds of sweetener or 31 pounds of starch could be made from that bushel or two and a half gallons of ethanol plus another 12 pounds used out of, for animal feed. So out of that bushel, 12 pounds of animal feed comes out of that. Uh, three pounds of gluten meal, one and a half pounds of corn oil. So those are just some interesting products that come from corn that kids, I think, are always amazed to find out when you read through the list. All three of these products are found on the National Ag in the Classroom website. And you can click on those and it brings up those images immediately for you. So that's a, a fun thing to do with them as well. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> this is another activity just to kind of get them familiar with our United States. This handout is also provided. You have a template on this National Ag in the Classroom site. If you click on that, um, it shows the template in the background. You also have what's called the Brief History of Corn handout, which that is a pre, uh, reproducible handout that looks like this. It has information that you can read and show with your kids. If you have older kids, this could be used um, in whole group. You can break it down into smaller group settings where they have to look for main idea details, look for certain vocabulary, look for compound words, so forth. So lots of ways to use this information. Sheree, we had one yes. person ask, how much should you say the bushel weighed? Or did you say? The bushel weighed, I believe it was, let me double check, 56 pounds. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So then as I'm um, sharing this information, I also get also from this website that has this same um, handout, it has the Corn Belt States. And I would go into the Corn Belt States and I could either have the students, you know, we can introduce this whole group, tell them the Corn Belt States and put it in a smaller group setting later on or individual where they have to research the Corn Belt States and use this template to actually color that in on their, on their um, worksheet. So that's how I would use that particular page. Then getting into the STEAM outline with science, I start by using the Get Growing lesson from Oklahoma. It's the basics about plants and what's needed. I also can use the, uh, the Pop Pop Popcorn lesson of activity one because that gives you a little background also into the process of growing plants starting from the seed process. And with that, I might say that, as we all know, and especially um, as teachers, I'm sure we've all done the simple experiments with growing seeds. So this is nothing different, but on each of these lessons, it gives you handouts, it gives you worksheets to use along with your students, depending upon your age levels. But you can do where they save their um, milk cartons, plant their seeds, you can get the clear little like punch cups is what I call them. You can plant your seeds in those so they can see the actual roots growing through. You can use different mediums instead of using like potting soil, go out in a place into your yard, not really a flower bed because sometimes they tend to be nutrient rich, enriched in your flower beds, but just out in your yard somewhere, just dig up some what I call dirt because dirt is not as rich with nutrients and minerals. So just get you a scoop of dirt, plant some seeds in just dirt, plant some seeds in your potting soil, try sand. Also some variations, and I'm skipping down here to activity two on the screen from the pop, pop, popcorn lesson. Um, plant some of those in the dark, some in the light. You can use water as normally used to water because we all know that's a necessary uh, medium. We can also try it with soda pop, try it with Kool-Aid just to see the differences in growth. And then back to activity. I wanna show you, I'm gonna take just a few minutes. There's some also awesome hyperlinks that come under this pop, pop, popcorn lesson. I'm not gonna show you the full length of all the clips, but I just wanna show you what is available. This one is what I would show and what I do show to introduce it.
Cherie, are you playing a video? Cherie. Yes. Are you playing a video right now? Because if you are, we cannot hear the sound. You can't hear the sound. Okay. I'm Remember, um, go, stop sharing your screen for just a little bit. And then um, whenever you click the share screen at the bottom, you have to also share your audio. Um, so you'll click share screen and then your desktop or your, and then at the bottom of that box, you'll allow um, your computer sound to be shared. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh huh. Share we'll screen. Share screen. And then at the bottom of that share screen, it says allow your computer's audio. Yes. See that. I we forgot that step. Forget yeah. that yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> also known as popcorn poppers, are made by the extension of heat in kernels yes, of corn. Can. Popcorn okay, machines are only commonly found in theaters and carnivals. Despite the decline in most industries during the Great Depression, the popcorn industry, well, popped. This was due to the fact that it was so cheap, from 5 to 10 cents a bag. The cost made it one of the few indulgences that struggling families could take comfort in. Street vendors would push steamer gas-powered poppers to areas with large crowds, and it soon became so popular that it was sold at state fairs, parks, and even restaurants. In a world of war and conflict, where sugar is scarce and snacks face extinction, one unforeseen hero emerges to save the day, with its low prices and its salty goodness. Popcorn sales soared everywhere. Except the movies. Movie theater owners actually banned popcorn from their establishments in order to maintain clean appearances and prevent distractions while watching films. In 1927, movies added sound, which expanded their clientele since literacy was no longer required. Street vendors took advantage of this rise in hungry moviegoers and set up shop right outside of theaters. Time to take your pick from that scrumptious array of tasty treats waiting for you at the snack bar. It wasn't long before theater owners became salty about missing out on all that potential popcorn profit that they first decided to lease lobby privileges to vendors, then eventually began selling snacks themselves. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Which was smart because it saved them from closure during the Great Depression. Well, hello, boy. Now, what do you say? Let's make with the popcorn right away. <laughs> Popcorn soon made its way from the movies to the microwaves. The 1970s and 1980s witnessed a pop in electrical poppers, hot air poppers, and microwave popcorn as the videotape industry brought movies back home. In 1981, General Mills created the earliest patent for the microwavable popcorn bag we're also familiar with. I'm Arnold Redenbacher with my famous gourmet popping corn and my gourmet microwave popping corn in handy pop and serve banks. Just pop it in your microwave. Then pop it in your mouth. Shortly after, similar brands such as Orville and Act 2 developed their own shelf-stable, non-refrigerated popcorn bags that could be used in any microwave. Today, the average American eats about 68 quarts a year. That's a lot of popcorn. But don't worry, research has found that popcorn is actually quite healthy. Popcorn is high in fiber and 100% whole grain. One serving of popcorn can provide for 70% of your daily whole grain intake and provides several vitamins and antioxidants. It isn't hard to make this love snack a healthy option. Remember to prepare it, air pop, limit the salt, and use your toppings in moderation. Do it now. Pop out for a big box of fresh, delicious popcorn. It's good, and it's good for you. So that's one, um, depending on your kids, I just, it's kind of a cute video that I like to share. Sorry. Another one, uh, I won't show you the full length of this one, but it tells you this about is how Kyle. popcorn is he made. Invented one way the ad. To destroy no way boredom. To get around some of that Turns out time. he wasn't alone. So I'll just briefly show you a few minutes of this one. This one runs just a little less than three minutes, but I'm going to play the whole thing that it takes you through 
the process. Popcorn is one of six types of corn, and it's the only kind that pops. They even breed the popcorn plant to enhance traits like color, taste, and popability. By fall, the crop is ready to harvest. Peeling back the husks reveals kernels that are smaller and harder than those of other corn. At harvesting, popcorn has moisture content of 16 to 20 percent. That's a bit too high, so to bring it down to 14 percent, they condition the crop in these giant bins, pumping warm air up through it to accelerate the drying. It's a critical step. Popcorn that's too dry may not pop, and if it's too wet, it could spoil when stored. In the factory, a series of oscillating screens sift chunks of cob and broken kernels out of the popcorn. The purification process continues at the okay, gravity we'll table. stop at that, but that goes on for another minute and a half or so. It's an informational piece that um, kids probably enjoy. And this one is a website. The, it's called popcorn.org and it gives you some, all of this information that is another plethora of ideas and things that you can use with the theme of popcorn. So there's literally thousands of resources out there to make this a fun unit for your kids. I always get excited doing this every year just because there is so much and it's almost hard to limit what I'm doing because there's so much out there. And then I'm gonna show you this last one. I think this is one that most kids will enjoy. It's going to actually show you the process in slow motion of a kernel. Get closer. That still works. Still works. So this is about two minutes. So I will show this because this is a pretty cool piece of information. show all of those just pick and choose I just want to give you an idea of what's available to incorporate into with your lesson plans another a lesson that I just pulled bits and pieces from is cornfield math and science and this particular lesson is geared towards some of the older kids third on up I believe but I I pulled out the popcorn ball polymer lesson in activity one simply because that is something that I like to do at one point is make popcorn balls with my students and a polymer was a fairly new term to myself I'm not a science buff but I learned that a polymer is something that is formed from small molecules that are combined to repeat a repeated structure of units so that's basically what a popcorn ball is you take popcorn and mash it together, um, mesh it together, I should say, and making your popcorn ball. So that's a new term. Also in activity two from this particular site is oobleck. 
and that's something that's fun to make. I'm sure a lot of you have made that in your classrooms before. I usually choose to do the oobleck in March with my Dr. Seuss unit simply because um, there's a book called Bartholomew and the oobleck. I would tie that back into our previous unit back in the fall of when we studied corn and, and revisit the cornstarch aspect of it. But I did wanna let you know that any of you that are interested in the recipe or want to have all the scientific basis of oobleck, it is found in this lesson under cornfield math and science. Another fun activity would be the sink and float. With that, you just get a couple of jars of water and in those jars, um, you are just testing and you can make predictions here with the kids of what you think is going to happen, but you take a kernel of corn versus a popped, the popped corn and ask which they think will happen. Will it sink or will it float? Will the, will the popped corn sink or float? Then you have all the scientific reasons there that you can explain which um, the results will happen. So that's kind of a fun thing. You can also bring in other things to experiment with besides the kernels and the popped corn. Indian corn sprouts would be an example like you see in the picture over here. If you take a, a because it tends to be more dried, so you would want to put that in a, a plate or container, let it soak in water for a couple of days and it should eventually sprout. I have done this before and you know beforehand the kids can predict how long it's going to take to sprout, then watch the process, see what happens once it begins to sprout. I've even taken that actual um, cob and planted it then in soil and watched it develop into a plant. So that's, that's just another variation of an experiment that you can do. Then the last one, a, a golden nugget. It is a PowerPoint that's not allowing me to pull that up at this point. But and with that, it shows the kernel and it talks about four types of corn or the main types of corn with dent corn being the most, uh, well, one of the most because it's used for livestock purposes. We've got flint corn, we've got sweet corn, flower corn. So it goes through that. It's a really neat PowerPoint and you can pick and choose the slides you want to use from that. Along with that, I have a companion lesson that I tend to do with my kids. The lesson's called Watch Your Language, Please. And it talks about the different types of corn. And this one actually shows eight different types of corn, along with pictures of the corn with the labels. And what I like to do with that, and by the way, this handout is included with this presentation today. This is one of the handouts that I have included. So you can do this as a whole group activity. I usually like to, after I've taught the lesson, let kids pair up, do this together, or do it in small group setting where they have to actually match the corn type with the definition of the corn. So that is an activity called, uh, that goes along with a golden nugget. For technology, that's just basically the research end of the corn. Uh, you can use this depending upon your grade level of students, um, however you want to. I've just listed a few questions that I'll leave up there for a minute just to stimulate some thinking for the students to research. Again, depending upon your grade level, you can go more in depth with a lot of that and from particular lessons that you're using uh, from Ag in the Classroom, you can get information from there that you might want your kids to research in more detail. Another factor of technology would be Kahoot, which there is an awesome Kahoot game using corn that I'll show you at the end of this that incorporates the technology aspect. Hey, with engineering, this is the fun part of the lesson or of the unit that I always enjoy. I use the resource Pumpkin Chunkin, which is geared towards the upper grades. It goes through third through fifth grades. But I, um, just to introduce this and talk about a catapult, some kids may not even understand what a catapult is. So I'll show them this video clip. How are we looking? I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Right, move back, No, we're not in the firing zone. We're not in the firing zone. Let's just do it. Let it go. Clear! <laughs> All right. All right.
What you would want to tell your kiddos is that no, now ours are not going to be to that scale. Those that's the large scale. But what's fun and it helps you collaborate with older students too. So if you have older students in your building, you might suggest this activity to co um, to cooperate with in making the catapults. What we do with our second graders is work with our gifted and talented teacher and her seventh grade students. And this is a picture of this last fall. We just went into the cafeteria, but her that gave her um, G&T students a project of designing their own catapults. And I think Ostrid mm -hmm. will um, verify this, that it was amazing to see all the different types that they came up with. There was no two catapults that were the same. Some were more sturdy than others, of course, but it was a lot of fun for our students to rotate through there. And um, they practiced with corn cobs, since that was our main theme, but we also used mini pumpkins and gourds and so forth. You could throw in a little math here too. They could predict how far they thought it would go. And it, was, it worked out really good because in our cafeteria, the tiles in the floor were in, um, one foot tiles so they were able to estimate how they how far they thought or and then go ahead and measure the distance now if you didn't have that access of course they can use rulers and yardsticks and so forth but that's that was just a really fun activity and it gets you involved with um, other programs within your school as well now for the art that's kind of a fun aspect of it as well I want to just briefly show you the home page for corn on the website. When you first go to Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom, um, you, can, you can do it by lessons. Um, I clicked on lessons by ag topic, and then I chose plant ag, and then, it, this, and then I chose corn, and this is what comes up. So it gives you a little background right here to use in any way you want. Then it has all of these resources from Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom that I've been talking about. And I didn't use all of them, but you click on those and it pulls it right up. I love these resources for the fact that it gives you the grade level. It gives you your standards, so you know exactly what standards you're gonna be teaching. There's companion resources as far as library books to use along with each of the lessons. It has links to other websites, so it's a wealth of information. And with art, this is the art, hopefully we're gonna have time at the end um, to demonstrate real quick this dragonfly art using corn husks. So that's where this craft is coming from. So that gives you an idea, kind of the foundation of where all of these lessons come from on the website. There is also the fruit, nuts, and veggie book 
with Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom, and I think that is accessible also on the website, but if you turn to page 64 of that book, it has an activity on there for mainly geared, I would say, towards the younger kids, pre-K through maybe first grade, because it involves a footprint in paint, but they get to make their own corn stalk footprint, so that is on that particular page. Corn cob mosaics, oh my goodness, there's so many things to do with the colored kernels. What you see in the picture here is an example of the corn cob mosaics, and this is also a template of the cob with the husk that I've included in with this presentation that you can have access to. But um, this is what I do. I use this, this art at the conclusion of some math activities, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But with art, whoops, excuse me, here's kind of a recipe. You can Google online all kinds of ways to color your kernels. You used to be able to buy a jar of colored kernels at the store, but they're harder to find now. But I found a couple of years ago when I uh, needed some that it's easy to color your own, and this is a quick way to do that. So that is um, the recipe for that. And like I said, there's, there's tons of different ways to do that. This is just the easiest one I found. Now, with your colored kernels, there's lots of math activities um, under the pop, pop, popcorn, activity four and five are things to do with your kernels, um, making patterns, especially if you're using the colored ones, making patterns, counting by ones, by twos, fives, tens, endless. Um, back in the pumpkin chunkin, that gets along in, again, as I mentioned earlier, with um, estimating distances and measurements. You can also have an estimation jar. I just have like a little baby food jar of kernels and that I let the kids guess how many have a little prize, whoever gets the closest. Uh, sorting, you can sort your kernels. You give the kids a fourth of a cup or less, depending on how many you decide to do. But you give the kids a, a handful of kernels, they sort them. I've also included a template that I made that just uses, uh, that is a graph. So once they sort them, they count them, and then they can incorporate that into their graph and color their bar graph accordingly. Place value also uses kernels plus, plus the popcorn. And this is a picture, it's kind of hard to see exactly, but for example, like this first little um, box would have the number, let's say 64. So you use the popped corn to show your tens digits and you use the kernels or the seeds to show your ones digits. So 64 would have six of the popcorn flakes glued down and then four of the kernels glued down. And so that's just a fun way to use math and show place value. But they would want to eat it. <laughs> and yes, that's right. They want to eat the popcorn. So I always put in that, that clause that if you do not touch your popcorn to your mouth, by the time we're finished, then I would supply them with popcorn. That would be their reward. And anyone that's eaten some of their popcorn, they, they miss out. And that always happens, as you guys probably can picture students in your own classrooms of the past that, that try that. So I've also included that template as well. Now keep in mind, um, they're, just, they're just some I've made. They're not real professional, but there is that template on tens and ones and the one on graphing for you to use if you want to. You can also, down here at the bottom, do facts. Um, you can buy, I've also included a template of popcorn kernel with a little popcorn box container, but on that, you can use that to write your facts. For example, six plus five on your little kernel, they have to drop it into a sack, a popcorn sack that would have the answer 11 on it. And, um, or you can use a little popcorn containers that you find at the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store. You can get those real cheap. And I found that you can use the visa visa pins on those and write your answer. So for example, I would write my answer 11 on my sack or on my container. And then if I wanted to use it later for language arts activity, all I have to do is erase that um, if it's the container and be able to get multiple uses out of that. So I'm just gonna kind of go through these real quick. I'm not gonna demonstrate all of them, but you can just tell language arts, oh my goodness, there's, there's countless activities. Back to the pop, 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 popcorn lesson, there's two grades, I mean, there's two different lessons. There's pre-K through second, which I've pulled most of my resources from. There's also for the upper grades, third through fifth. Some of them kind of overlap a little bit, but as you can imagine, it gets a little more detailed with your older grades. There's comprehension, vocabulary into lesson six. 
Also, there's a main idea, which is a smart board lesson that goes along with this particular one on both the lower and upper elementary sections. Uh, plant parts we eat is geared toward the lower kids, but it shows some comprehension with vocabulary, get growing, has some print concepts along with vocabulary. Then with the National Ag in the Classroom, that's the websites I showed you back towards the beginning. Uh, if you click on that, there's lots of comprehension vocabulary there that are geared um, towards any grade level that you can adapt it to. There's also a corn cob toy lesson that has uh, comprehension and it also incorporates a little bit of phonics with that. And then finally, just real quick, these are just some things that I've come up with. Um, you can use popcorn as your theme with compound words. You write your, on your template, write your split your pop, I mean, split your compound words, and then you would have this somewhere as their white means to check it. They would combine them and then check it with the one that's spelled out later on. That's one idea on compound words. With vowels, again, you can have five containers or five popcorn sacks with each of the short vowels labeled. Choose words from what you've been working on, vocabulary such as you see here, cob, snack, butter, and then they would have to drop the, the corn template into the container. Proper nouns, kind of the same way, but you use sentence strips. Have simple sentences. They can be taken from your, your material that you're reading and using with your lessons. Um, they would use popped corn to show all of their proper nouns, to, to like place that underneath the proper nouns in the sentence, and then um, identify the common nouns with the kernels. Younger students, pre-K, kindergarten, for the tactical part of it, for your finer motor skills, they could spell out their names. Use the popped popcorn for any capital letters, use the kernels to spell out their lowercase letters. And then if you're working on subjects and predicates, kind of the same thing, write a subject on one template, a predicate on the other, they have to match those up. Lots, lots and lots of ideas. This is a fun book report idea with your SAC. Um, you can have them um, do like it says here, put the title, the author, the illustrator on their sack. Then they would um, draw a picture regarding their, whatever story they've read. For example, um, I just chose a story called Popcorn. It's a real simple story. They would read that and they would illustrate it. And then here's the fun part of it. Once they've got their sacks done as a share time, while you're sitting around in a circle, as a reward, you would fill their sacks with popcorn. And so while they were enjoying their popcorn, maybe sitting around in a circle together, each one of them would take turns sharing about their book. Or you could do it in pairs even. Uh, lots of writing activities to do regarding corn and regarding what you're working on as a follow-up. The vocabulary matching, the types of corn, that's what I mentioned earlier with the dent corn, the sweet corn. They read the definition, they match it with the picture. This is a fun thing I like to do with my kids. Pop goes the popcorn where you spread a sheet out in the middle of the classroom floor. You have to set out some parameters, of course, and some guidelines for that. But you, if you have a hot air popper, this is great. You just set it in the middle. You put your seeds in there and they can watch it pop out. You got it. So on the popcorn, I talked to you earlier about the polymers making the popcorn balls. Uh, a, a variation of popcorn balls is fun for the kids. I usually take the Tootsie Pop suckers and I mold my popcorn ball, making it kind of small, mold my popcorn ball around the Tootsie Pop sucker. And that way they have a handle to hold on to while they're eating the popcorn ball. Finally, uh, you, can, you can Google different places around the state for mazes. We are um, going to hopefully get to take a trip to a corn maze to highlight our unit at the end of October. So that's always a fun option if you have one in your area or within a safe traveling distance. Okay, then we have corn facts with Kahoot. Kahoot is a lot of fun activity. It's on the website too. You go to corn facts Kahoot. When you go to, I think it's under the um, resource page. You, um, you'll scroll down and you'll find the label Corn Fat Kahoot. It has the lesson right here that you can use as a preface, preface into what you're doing. Uh, then you actually, you know, you can set up your Kahoot. 
Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that, but. Um, sure. Sorry yes, to interrupt. <laughs> do you happen to have an example of the book report, like the SAC books? I that do. You do. Yes. You have awesome. We have one person. Sure. We have people wanting to see it. Yes. I did sit down, fortunately, and make one real quick. <laughs> we can get back to our shared screen or split screen again. Stop sharing, maybe? No. No. If you stop How do we get back screen, to where? Yes, if okay, you stop, stop sharing your screen, it will make you guys large. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so here is the stack. Like, here's one side of it right here. It's got the title. This was the, this was the book that, um, sorry, my notes are in there. Okay, there's the book that I had my kids read, Popcorn. Um, so then that, and they can do this depending on your age group individually, or you can have them work with a partner, but that's, that's the information on that side. And they would choose their favorite part of the book. And so, of course, at the end, it talked about the popcorn party. And I'm not an artist, so I didn't get to draw the little characters in there. So I just kept mine simple. But 